Babylon can't stop this campaign. campaign. Rampage, cause I know why the heat the rage. Cause the guys be bringing it out. We bringing this it kingdom, out. we bringing it down. Yeah. Lost sheep, we'd have been found. found. Wait until we get a crown. Crown talk. Yeah. Just that crown talk. Yeah. Me or don't want to be like Nino Brown now. Yeah. Cause this that king talk. Who? Real life king talk. Who? Like Solomon, I see things clearly like a greenhouse. The wordplay can't get colorful. The scriptures cutting you the butter too. Not to mention we a living legend. Don't know what to do when a myth is standing right in front of you. You better watch and just take notes. The father sent the flood in a rainbow, but his son coming back with fire. So it ain't gonna be no more scapegoats. Let me tell you what the prophecy, unparalleled with the prophecies. Stopping fritz, bodies in the street. My people, property in this monopoly. Call it America, where the dreams come true. When nightmares and the demons come too The side of my agenda I don't give a damn if you offended Cause, Cause your school is not teaching you What your nationality is What your heritage is Who your ancestors are Guess who your ancestors are The people in this book Here, I'm going to help you understand We're going to start at the bottom We're going to work our way up Right now I'm going to start and show you Why we're in the condition we're in right now The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1 these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So, you know who, Mo have you ever heard of Moses? Okay, you've heard of Moses. All right, you guys will know who Moses is. Now, understand this. Moses was a black man too. Moses was black. Do we have pictures of Moses? No, we don't have pictures of Moses. Okay, but Moses was black too, man. Now, listen to what Moses had to say to the children of Israel. That's the only people he was talking to. He wasn't talking to anybody else other than your ancestors. All right? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now listen, hearken means to listen. You understand? To listen. When God says hearken, he means listen. To observe and to do all his commandments and his... Wait, not some of them. All his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, is a curse... I'm talking to you guys right now. Mama, you can listen in. We're going to get to you in a minute. A curse. Is it a bad thing or a good thing? Bad. It's a bad thing, right? So God said he's going to curse us if we did not listen to him. All right? Now, we're going to tell you some of the things we didn't listen to him for. Verse 16. Curse shall thou be in the city. So it says, curse shall thou be in the city. We're in the city right now, right? And cursed shall thou be in the field. And in the field. Wasn't your ancestors, I don't know how much they teaching you guys about slavery in school, but our ancestors were cursed in the field. They called them cotton fields. They called them tobacco fields. You see this right here? Come up here and take a look. Come on. Cane fields. Treat us. They still treat us that bad right now. You know why? Because... They know who you are, and they're going to make sure that you don't know who you are. But we're out here to help you understand that you are the greatest people on this planet. God chose you, the Israelites, to rule this planet. And one day we're going to rule this planet again. But in order to do that, we have to keep God's commandments. I'm going to read you some more curses. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So... You know, listen very carefully what this means. Are you married, sis? you married. Okay, so now you and your husband are at home, and somebody, some neighbor said something, you know, yeah, yeah, your kids are doing whatever, whatever. And they come and knocking on your door saying that we heard that you were treating your kids bad, and we're going to take your kids away from you. They did that to us during slavery, and they still doing it today. So you can get taken away from your parents, just like that, by your enemies. Enemies, are they people that you like? Do they like you? Your friends usually like you, right? Here's another one. Give me 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thy serve thine enemies. Ooh, wait, wait. That Bible said thy enemies. 
to thy serve thy enemy. Now listen closely to the way where the scripture is going. It says, so thy serve thy enemies, all right? Which the Lord shall send against thee. Now God sending these enemies against us because we didn't do what? We didn't listen. We were disobedient. So he's punishing us, so he's sending our enemies against us. Listen to what he's doing. And hunger? So if we want something to eat, do we own farms? Do we make grow our own food? No, so we got to go to our enemies. Our enemy. Yeah, some of them own farms, but but do you go to them to get your food? You do. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember that too. Right. So, and a, and a lot of our people don't either. Yeah. So we're talking about our, us as a whole. We're talking about us as a whole, okay? In hunger and in thirst. And so our water, you get water from, well, you live in the city, right? Yeah. So your water from the city. Yeah, right, right. I got a well at home too. But if you don't pay that water bill, who going to shut it off? It don't look like you, right? Okay. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, your clothes, I'm quite sure if you look at the tags in the back of each one of y'all shirts, it's going to say made in China, made in Japan, made in Taiwan, somewhere else, but we don't make it. How you doing, bro? What's going on? All right. You came over here to get some history? Uh, yeah. Oh, praise. All right, all right. So, and listen, listen up. And in nakedness, and in the want of all things. So it says in want of all things, we have to go to our enemy. So you guys go to school, right? Guess who runs those schools? Your enemies. That's why you don't know who you are. You call yourself, what'd you call yourself? You said you were, your nationality was what? Huh? Well, no, you said, yeah, you know you're a Jew now. But uh, before you knew you was a Jew, you was what, an African American or black or colored, like that, right? So they won't teach you this in your schools because they don't want you to know that you're God's chosen people. That's right. You guys are all God's chosen people. But in order for you to get the blessings that God has for us, for you, you got to keep the commandments. So your mother and your father have to start teaching you these things by reading the Bible to you. You have to be taught who you are in this book. Your, in, your, your ancestors, Moses and Jeremiah and Isaiah and Christ, these are all your forefathers. These are all your ancestors. They, they came before you and they gave you this history book for you to learn about them. What they did good and when God blessed them and what they did bad and when God cursed them. You understand? You guys are getting this? Okay, so read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Look down here. You see this right here? This is called a yoke of iron. That's what they used to put on our forefathers because they would try to get free. They want to run away. And to them, we were money to them. We were, we were property. And so when we ran away and they caught us, they put yokes of iron on our necks to keep us from running away. Because we were slaves back then. Oh, Guess what? Lord. We're still slaves right now. Oh, Lord. We're still slaves. You see that man that's over there? We call him Esau. So, those people back then used to do this to us. And they're still doing it to us right now. But see, we can't see those chains. You see these chains right here? We can't see them anymore. You know why? Because they're in here. We have to break these chains in here by coming back to this Bible. We have to start reading about our heritage and our history and start to learn what we need to do in order to get out of the condition we're in right now. You got something for me, officer? Oh, I thought you, okay, I'll praise you. All right, so that was Deuteronomy 28. Oh, matter of fact, uh, give me um, 68 because I want to show you. Okay, okay, sir. So, oh, oh, I'm sorry. All right, all right. <laughs> Oh, we all, I got, yeah, I got two more for you. I got this one and the next one. All right. The, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. 
He said, bring you into Egypt again with ships. Now, the Bible explains itself. In Exodus 20 and 2, it says Egypt means slavery or bondage. That's what Egypt means. So he says he's going to bring you back to slavery again with ships. So our forefathers got over here. How did we get here? We got here on slave ships, cargo slave ships. You see that right there? That's how they used to pack us in these slave ships to get us from West Africa all the way to America. You see all that? How can a man do that to another man unless he hates that man? That's how they did that. All right. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, and it's saying you shall see it no more again. It's talking about your homeland. Your homeland is actually Jerusalem. Right. It's not America. We're, this is not our rest, as the Bible says. We're not supposed to get comfortable here because this is not our home. Our home is Jerusalem. And one day, we're going back there, okay? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. There's that word again. He says you will be sold Unto your enemies. Where is that enemy? There you go. Sold unto our enemies. The sub-Saharan slave trade and the um and the North Atlantic slave trade. That's how we got here. And we were sold by the Africans and the Arabs to the white man to get here. That's how we got here. That's how you're standing in front of me right now. Can you finish that? And we shall be sold to your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. So it's talking about when it says buy you, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, give me two um, It's an old Quaker word for redeem. So Martin Luther King, you remember him? And Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman and, and Marcus Garvey, um, uh, Malcolm X. All those people tried to save us, but it didn't work. They ended up getting killed. And you know why? Because they weren't keeping God's commandments. But it was just, a, it, it was just something for us to look forward to because our people were trying to bring us back together. But they didn't know the only way we're going to come back together is through this Bible. And this Bible does not belong to everybody. I got one for you before you go. Um, no, go ahead. I, I, want you to, I want you to listen to this carefully because this is, this is going to determine whether or not you're going to receive this word or not. Because this is something that our sisters like to book against. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, is an abomination a good thing? Okay, so God says that a man shouldn't wear what a woman's wear, and a woman shouldn't wear what a man wears. Can you help me understand that? Right. So, do you understand what that really means? So women shouldn't be wearing pants, right? Right, okay. So is that something that you can accept? So you know you're wearing pants right now. Actually, you're wearing underwear right now. Underwear. They're underwear. They should be under a dress. Our sisters should dress modestly. You know, that's what the scripture says. Matter of fact, you got the, um, um, not yet, Titus yeah. Because... See, in, in, this, in this world right now, there's so much evil going on right now, and you don't want to teach your, your, your children. If you're trying to you know, understand this Bible, you don't want to teach them these things. And if they see you wearing a dress, then your, your, your daughters are going to wear a dress because our sisters are supposed to dress modestly. This is sin beyond sin because, first of all, you're, you're promoting your brother's to look at you in a way that's not godly. Of course. But see, your job also as a daughter of Sarah 
as a sister of, of the scriptures to not allow that to happen. No, 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 no. What we're trying to tell you, we, did, we just read you the scripture, right? Okay. Listen to this now. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged woman likewise should be in behavior as becoming holiness. Not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. Of good thing because you have to teach them. See, we're out trying to teach our people, and while we're out teaching our people, you are teaching them. We teach you, we teach them. Right? That's how it's supposed to go. And they should teach the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children. Verse 5. Wait, wait, wait. Now, see, it says to teach them. Because, see, we have to teach you because you weren't taught by godly men, we were taught by the world. All of us were taught by the world at one point or another. And we come back to the Bible so we learn what God wants us to know. Because, you know, you understand God created all this, right? So we have to listen to what he says. So after he teaches us, then we teach you, then you teach them. That's how this. That's how the order goes. First, man, hold that. Give me First Corinthians chapter uh, 11, verse 3. Because we're going to show you there's an order. There's going to be an order in the kingdom. Out here, there's no order. There's chaos out here right now. This chaotic and our children are being taught garbage. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ. So it's saying the head of every Israelite man. It's not talking about all men. This book is written to, for, and by Israelites. So it's talking about the Israelite man. Our head is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And your head is the man. Christ is not your head unless you're not married. Your head is your husband. I mean, yes, that's right. And the head of Christ is God. So there's order. There's God, Christ, man, woman. There's an order. And that order is coming back to be established on this earth when Christ returns. But right now, it's chaotic. But the, the Bible says, rehearse the righteous acts. So Christ came to do away with the sacrificial laws, but all the other laws still stand. So while we're here, we have to rehearse keeping the commandments and a commandment that a woman should not wear pants and a man should not wear a dress is a very important commandment so we showed you that commandment it's up to you whether you want to go with it god don't care about what you think this book is not about appeasing to our feelings and emotions it's about keeping his commandments because that's why we're in the condition we're in right now we refuse to keep his commandments. We weren't taught. The churches don't teach you this. Your pastor, give me uh, 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 Michael cha uh, chapter, no, give me um, Hosea 2 and 7. Two, two, no, 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 I want a, a, a priest lips should keep knowledge. Because I need you to understand that your pastors and preachers are not teaching you this Bible the way it's supposed to be taught. And that's their job. But they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So they're going to be damned. We pray that they repent and come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments. But most of them don't want to. The book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. So the knowledge is the law, the commandments. That's not. God created all this, and then he gave you a set of laws when he finished. So these trees and these leaves were all created by, I mean, you can't, you can't even think about how to start something like this. So he's an all-powerful God, and then he created us. And he created the Israelites to rule the planet and all the other nations to serve under them if we kept his commandments. So you, you understand what we're saying here today, sis? I, okay, God, we got one more for Isaiah 55 and the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So God says, you can't think on this level. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are carnal. They're earthly. My thoughts are godly. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. So we're telling you this because from this point on, you've been marked. This is your history from here on out. You children understand that this is your history. Everybody in this book is your forefather and was set here 
for you to learn from. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.